What's up, YouTube? It's me, the Artisan MC, and today I'm going to react to Bad Batch Season 3, Episode 5, The Return. Now, I haven't been looking forward to this show. This is not a secret. I have not been looking forward to this show. So I put off watching this episode, even though I was awake on Tuesday at midnight, even though I had time Wednesday, I put off watching this show until today. And had I not been on um, Dr. Anwar's panel about uh, Dune Part 2, shout out to Dr. Anwar, sub to his channel, Big Ideas Entertainment and Media, or Big Ideas 76 Entertainment and Media, um, I would not have already been sitting at my computer waiting for something I needed to actually work on. So this is what you're getting. Um, that being said, it's a 30 minute episode, obviously. Um, it was mostly uneventful, except for the few things that happened in it that to me resonated with what I care about in this series at all. And that's Crosshair in the Bad Batch. Now, Unlike most episodes of this so far, the first four episodes so far, this episode actually dealt with the one character I'm actually more curious about than any, which is Crosshair. Crosshair is an interesting character to me. And I felt that last season did that character a disservice because it didn't progress his story really any. Not in the, not in the way that I wanted to see it portrayed. That, that should have been one of the main points in the whole season. It wasn't. It was spaced out in between there. Now, this episode, you get them. I'm forgetting I'm forgetting the name of the place they went to. I wanted to say it was Utapau, but that doesn't seem like the right name for that planet. But basically, Omega and the Bad Batch are back on this planet, a little sanctuary planet where Wanda Sykes' character is the head of it. And... They're there, and Omega is happy to be back with Wrecker and Hunter, and she's looking for Crosshair. And when she goes outside to find Crosshair, you find Crosshair out near the shore doing target practice because he has trembles in his hand now from all the torture and stuff like that. So in my mind, this means that his clone is degrading, right? He could have some nerve damage from all the torture, or... His clone is degrading a bit. Now, in the books, this is something that happened with Fetch's clones and some of the other clones. They just start degrading and fading away that you find out that they had a time limit on how long they could actually live. Right? Well, Crosshair has trembles in his trigger hand. And so it throws off his ability to shoot with the pinpoint accuracy he, he used to be able to shoot with. Now, that is interesting to me. A sniper with hand trembles that has to overcorrect or learn how to get back to where he was is interesting in and of itself to me. Outside of the fact that this is a clone who went against his brothers to side with the Empire and then throughout all the horrors he did with them, he actually went against the Empire when he saw for himself how evil they actually were. And then he was punished for that. So coming back and being with his brothers again after so much b bad blood and things went on is interesting for that character. And his story is the one that's the most interesting to me. I mean, make no mistake about it. I don't care that much about Omega. She's not that interesting of a character to me, especially if she can always do anything. She's not interested. Crosshair is interesting. The Bad Batch in and of itself as a group is interesting. And that's what I got a lot more of, which I was happy with in this episode. Like, I know that it should have been um, a release in the Quackens episode, but no, there was not really anything for me to cuss about in this episode because it was more character driven on the interaction between Hunter, Crosshair, and the rest of the team. Now, Trying to find a way back to Mount Tantus, which I also don't care about. The team 
figures out once they're joined by Echo that there's intel they need, and it could probably be um, deciphered since they don't have tech anymore by jacking into an Imperial terminal. Crosshair knows of a terminal that they can get to that's probably unguarded and sends them back to the plant, this planet that he was on. I don't remember the name of the planet, unfortunately. Um, I do believe it was the planet from season two where Crosshair killed the Imperial Guard, which basically put him in jail and got him pris imprisoned. But I am not 100% sure. I can't remember the name of the planet at all. That's how much that season was great on me. Either way, um, they go to this planet and are able to decipher this data pad by jacking into this terminal. And outside of this planet serving as a snow version of Dune, complete with a snow worm, worm, You get more information on Hunter and Crosshair actually having an interaction and actually getting to admit to each other their issues, in a sense, their issue with each other. And being thrust into a situation where they have to make some kind of peace with this. And they do. Which I find more interesting and more compelling because, like I have said, I'm tuning into this show to see what's going on with the Bad Batch, not Omega. So this episode was obviously more interesting to me because it was more the social interaction between once brothers in arms, once enemies, and now thrust together again after all this time, after all these acts have been committed. How do they interact with each other? How to how do they bury the hatchet in a sense and learn to trust each other and have their come to Jesus moments with each other at the same time? Because it's still a relationship. They're still brothers. No matter what path Crosshair went down, no matter what path Hunter went down, they are still brothers. And they need to be able to understand each other, what has happened, what each has gone through and why they made the choices that they made. And you get a little bit of that. You get good scenes where Hunter actually confronts Crosshair, and they get to say what's on their mind, and Crosshair tells them, you, it was your fault. Don't, don't be mad at me because you didn't do what needed to be done. I gave you, I took great personal risk to give you the information that I gave you, and you ignored it. You know, that's calling Hunter on his leadership because he let the information that was there, his feelings about things biased him to using the information that was present. And Crosshair makes no mistake in letting them know that he paid a price for that. He paid a price for getting them that information, which means the fact that he did that with such great personal risk to himself means he really does care about them. He does. Now, Hunter has to own that, which is interesting for his character in and of itself, because at least in the show, Hunter is supposed to be the leader. But Hunter does a lot of things that is not leadership wise. He's always following somebody else in a different sense and makes mistakes. So I'm really trying to understand how he became the leader in a situation where most of the time he's not tactically sound. Now, the other thing that got to happen was Hunter actually giving his words to Crosshair about what he felt about what Crosshair did. And Crosshair has to actually explain to him that, yeah, it was, I made mistakes. I've done some horrible things. And that he's not okay with it, but he did it. He was trying to be a good soldier. He was doing what stood out to me, he was doing what he thought Hunter would do, which is be a good soldier, in a sense. And that put him at odds with his brothers, who he thought were not being good soldiers. 
But what he saw was that that good soldier idea was not represented in the empire, which is why he ended up killing that imperial officer. And once he told Hunter that, that, yeah, he did that, Hunter understands what that means, that a clone turned on an imperial. Doesn't really happen. So he understands the personal stakes that Crosshair has actually been through. And understands a little bit better what his journey has been to get to the point where they're standing there on the snow talking to each other about this and getting it out. Which is what, for me, brotherhood is about a lot of times. Sometimes you're going to slug it out. Sometimes you just need to talk it out. But one way or the other, you got to get it out so you can alleviate all this static and confusion about what's going on. Some things need to be said, and they might not be nice. They're not supposed to be nice, but they are supposed to be said. So for me, that was the core. That was the important part of the episode. The rest of this stuff... Uh, it was it was pointless it's pointless mission going you know we need to obtain this item on this base and there's a monster here and now we got to do some other stuff in the middle of having this dialogue so we can get this information have this dialogue this exposition between these two characters kind of patch it up and then off to the next thing and that's all it was so Whereas I'm sure somebody else would deep dive this and say there was a lot more to it. There wasn't a lot to it. The most important parts, like most of these episodes, came in the last two minutes from dialogue. Which, to me, would seem like the only thing that could actually be written for this shit. Everything else would be bullet points. They go to a planet to get intel. Echo joins the group. There's a monster. There's a worm. Kind of looks like Dune, but it's in the snow. They have to complete this mission. They got the intel. Now they can leave. And then all this dialogue about them actually talking to each other that was actually the important part of the episode. Two minutes. Either way, um, that's what happened. It was decent because I like the dialogue between those characters, but I wouldn't jump out the window and say it was a great episode. It wasn't riveting. I mean, look, I'm doing this on Patreon first. I'm sitting over here eating my mixed nuts, my trail mix, and partially looking at this shit because it's not anything to grab your attention. It's not. But in the terms of being offensive, it wasn't as offensive as I was on last episode or episode three. So that's an improvement. But it's not changing me in the sense that I'm really excited for what's going on in this episode. No, I'm thinking it's actually getting to a part where it should be, where it's focusing on these characters that are in the title and not focusing just on one little girl who is not in the title. And not what the show is supposed to be about. So, with that, that's it. That's my reaction to episode five of season three of The Bad Batch. Yeah. Um, like, share, subscribe, support the stream if you feel so inclined. I am Artisan MC, and I will see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>